Hi, my name is Sonny Murray, a field crop specialist with Perennia. So the way this field was managed, uh, the corn crop was planted uh, before emergence, the residual herbicide was applied. Uh, it was checked for uh, weed escapes around the third leaf. Uh, and at that time we can put on uh, a post-emergent product that doesn't have the residual that's going to hold back our cover crop. And then at that uh, fifth, the sixth leaf, uh, the uh, cover crop seed was broadcast and left on the uh, soil surface. So today we're standing in a sweet corn field. Uh, this field was probably planted at around uh, 22,000 seeds per acre. So comparatively to uh, silage corn and grain corn, that's quite low. Uh, we don't quite achieve the uh, canopy. Uh, what they did here was uh, they waited till about the six leaf stage on the corn and then they came in with a 50-50 blend of uh, double cut red clover plus uh, Italian ryegrass. So the uh, red clover very quick to establish compared to uh, single cut red clover. Uh, the Italian ryegrass of course we all know does not tend to go to seed in that uh, year of establishment. Uh, when you're considering doing this, uh, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. First, of course, is seeding rate. Uh, in this case, uh, the farmer chose to go in with uh, 18 pounds per acre of that 50-50 blend. Uh, depending on what you want to achieve, you could go anywhere from uh, 8 pounds per acre all the way up to 22, uh, just depending on what you're trying to achieve. Those higher rates give you a denser mat and more organic matter production, uh, more uh, nitrogen production for the next crop from that legume. A uh, grower may also uh, want to choose a different species uh, because you have that dense canopy you want to make sure the species you choose is uh, a shade tolerant and it can take that shade uh, for uh, most of the year and then as that canopy opens up the sunlight will get in and it will take off from there. Um, the next thing you want to consider is what uh, residual herbicides you're using in that uh, weed control program. Uh, there's been a lot of research done in Ontario by uh, Darren Robinson at Ridgetown. Uh, he's shown that ryegrasses, uh, it, it's good if you use the Converge, On Guard, Integrity, uh, Amazon plus Atrazine, uh, and stay away from uh, perhaps uh, Prowl, Focus, Lumax, and Newton. Uh, on the clover side, uh, Integrity again and Converge are good choices. Prowl can work, but uh, there's a little bit of injury on the clover. So you want to make sure that uh, you choose a residual herbicide product that will uh, um, let those uh, grasses uh, or, uh, or clovers establish. So there's a lot of debate uh, going on in Nova Scotia. Do you mix that cover crop seed with your fertilizer? And in my mind, those are truly two different steps. I can put up with that but also there's some that will say well I'm going to cut my fertilizer rate back and I'm going to spread at the half the distance and that seemed to work for them um, but of course you have to keep in mind the timings uh, depending on how your system works maybe the timing of the application of your cover crop seed is different than that of your, uh, of your granular fertilizer. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is uh, when you're going to uh, terminate uh, this cover crop uh, within your corn stand. So uh, depending on whether you're doing sweet corn, silage, or grain corn, as that uh, corn crop matures, uh, these are going to die back uh, somewhat. Or in the case of a silage crop, you're going to remove that crop entirely. When that happens, the light uh, finally gets into that uh, cover crop that's underneath the canopy. And uh, from there, uh, the uh, cover crop just explodes. So uh, research has shown that through that October period, uh, both ryegrass and the red clover put on quite a bit of uh, volume of roots below the soil surface. So you definitely don't want to uh, uh, kill that or terminate that cover crop before that. Um, so depending on what you're going to use that field for, if it's uh, early vegetables or uh, into uh, early uh, field crops the next year, you may want to uh, choose to uh, terminate that cover crop in the fall. Uh, usually we target the uh, first or second week of November, so quite, quite late. Um, if you choose to overwinter it, uh, 
usually the first of May there's not a lot of uh, growth on that cover crop but by the end of May it can be quite uh, quite uh, vigorous uh, you know up to your knees or your waist and quite a mass of, uh, of uh, biomass to control. Hi there, Sonny Murray with uh, Perennia Food and Agriculture, field crop specialist out in the field today with uh, Rosalie Madden, uh, checking on some of the uh, cover crops uh, that we uh, looked at earlier in the season. So last time we were in this field, it was uh, the beginning of September. It's now uh, November 5th uh, and just uh, checking on the progress of the uh, cover crops. Uh, we're at a field here of uh, Gray Garrett's uh, Elm Ridge Farms. Uh, this is a sweet corn field uh, that was harvested, uh, it's probably harvested uh, about the middle of September. As we move uh, towards the end of November, the uh, legumes and uh, grasses will uh, set themselves up for uh, dormancy. Uh, but we just wanted to have a look and see uh, what kind of uh, density we've got at this point. We have about uh, 10 inches uh, of growth on the uh, crop and you can see it's uh, quite dense. So with this uh, cover crop interseeded with the uh, sweet corn. Uh, it's going to hold soil in place to uh, protect it from erosion. It's going to hold some of the uh, nitrogen left over from that sweet corn crop uh, for next year. Uh, build organic matter. But with the clover in here you're also going to fix a little nitrogen. Uh, this late in the fall you could put some animals in here for uh, grazing. Um, they'd graze on some of the uh, corn stalks, uh, leaves, also some of the uh, cobs that are uh, left over from harvest but also the uh, uh, red clover and ryegrass.